So today we are starting off a long-term review, and that is for the NOCO GB40 battery jump pack. Um, this particular one, uh, the reason why I bought this brand was because Project Farm did uh, a review on this comparing other brands, and this one seemed to, uh, this particular brand seemed to be the one that, that stood out among the rest. Uh, the one that he did was a GBX 140, I think, uh, which is a lot larger one, more, I was going to say more bigger, uh, bigger than, bigger than I would ever need. Uh, most of the stuff that I, I, I work on is four cylinder engines, kind of the Toyota Corolla size. I occasionally get a V6 gasoline powered or gas powered engine. And uh, rarely do I ever work on any diesels. This particular one will do a uh, six liter uh, gasoline powered engine and a three liter diesel powered engine. And I'm thinking that those specs are based basically on a completely dead battery, not getting any help from the battery, and this thing being able to crank that uh, engine over. Now, for a little background as to how this fits into uh, my day-to-day -day use as far as a road mechanic goes. Uh, what, what'll end up happening is I'll show up to a place, got a no start, guy says, hey, I think it's the battery. Normally what I would do is I'd go out there with my jumper cables. I like to, when I have a situation like that and I have a uh, battery that's dead, I like to jump the battery and see how things are with the way everything is just a personal preference instead of just replacing the battery then doing tests so i like to jump it check the voltage see that it's actually charging drive it out to my truck and then that way there i got you know i clean the terminals i got my uh, terminal protectors out there and before i replace the battery check for parasitic load that's just the way i like to do things now most places will have more than one forklift so jump starting or finding a forklift to jump start it isn't that big of a problem. I mean, I still got to get the guy to let me use it for 10 seconds so I could do the jump starting, but this would just make life simpler. And the fact that it is a, a compact design, I could just throw this in my tool bag, roll into the, uh, into the building there. And if you didn't know, sometimes most of the times when these things don't, when these things break down, it's not in a very convenient spot. It's usually I'm parked here and it's way on the other side of the building. So getting it started and back to my truck uh, comes in handy. So what we're going to do today is we're going to crack this out of the box and uh, kind of take a look at it. All the bells and whistles that come with it. I'm going to use it for the better part of a year, uh, hopefully. And uh, get back to you at some point in time and let you know how it held up. Um, I'm really looking for something that will hold a charge when it's not being used, which is important. Be able to jump start things multiple times, meaning not necessarily the same machine, but you know, use it on a Tuesday, three weeks later, use it on a Thursday, that, that type of deal, and not have to worry about recharging this thing every single time I use it. And um, yeah, for for reference, I've had uh, jumper packs in the past when I was in a shop. We had one of those big heavy guys that are great. They're also extremely expensive and extremely heavy. So for me to use one of those, it would just make sense for me to bring a battery into the warehouse as opposed to something small like this. Um, I had one, I think I got a, a Sears one once. It barely lasted a year, and I had one from Harbor Freight. I can't tell you which one, but that that one also barely lasted a year. So I'm I'm kind of kind of fool me once type thing where I'm kind of hesitant to get one of these things. This particular one's like a hundred bucks, so I'm not out too much as far as if this uh, turns out to be a disaster. But um, yeah. So let's uh, flip the camera down. I'll crack this guy open, take a quick a quick look at the features on this thing, and uh, yeah, let's do that. Now, short of opening the box to make sure I didn't get shipped a brick, I haven't really looked at this too much. So you got a box within a box. Uh, actually, some nice, nice graphics going on in that thing. A one-year warranty. Hopefully, we don't have to test that. Let me get the slider box. Foam for protection. 
And then we got the thing. And we got some more stuff in here. Got the jumper cables. A little handy carrying pouch. And a USB, a micro USB charger. Boo. And a 12 volt adapter. And your manual. Alright, so looking at the outside of the thing. Uh, this part right here is where your jumper cables plug into. They actually look like RC connectors. Are they RC connectors? That's a good question. It's an XT60. Mm, no. They might be... Yeah, they're like four or five millimeter banana plug style. This be a banana plug. I think these are three. So yeah, that's like a five probably. I'm guessing this here is the uh, the power button here. All right, and that gives you state of charge. This hasn't been charged up yet. Uh, you're looking at what do we got here? 12 volt, thousand amps. Uh, this does have polarity protection, so I'm assuming that's what this little red light is for. So if you uh, cross the uh, cross the streams or the cable there, and we got ourselves a USB output, which is supposed to be 2.1 amps, I believe is what they said, and a USB input for charging, which again is supposed to be 2.1 amps. We will test that. Now we have a light on the front here. Let's give that a whirl. Uh, that would be your high, medium, and I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of multiplexing there on that. I'm not seeing that in person, the ripple there. But um, yeah, I mean that's a, it's definitely a usable, usable light, especially if you're underneath the hood. It's kind of nice they put it on the end where you plug it in, so you kind of see where you're, where you're going. A little little forethought there and then we got the old warning SOS not much of a pause between the S's so it's more of a SSOS SOS <laughs> but uh, yeah no one knows Morse code anymore anymore so who cares now checking the actual jumper cables here they got this little spacer I'm not sure why that's there or need it but uh all right and that kind of it is keyed and it actually just kind of plugs into there like that and then you got these big mamba jambas a very strong spring which i like it'll help you break that oxidation on those lead terminals but uh yeah, that's kind of nice. So let's get into the old uh, USB output, output, I should say. Let's plug this guy in. Like I said, I think they were claiming 2.1 amps output. And it doesn't fit. <laughs> All right. We got other ways of doing this. All right, that ought to work. I just got their um, included USB cable plugged into this on the micro USB side. So right now we're set at 1.39 amps. Let's put the load on it. And it seems like it's holding it fairly well. 4.6 volts. Let's crank her up. And we are going to be sitting at, alright, we hit the 2, and now we're down to 4.5. Much below 4.5, I don't know if I'd be calling that good, but, yeah, 2.1 amps, we're sitting at 4.5. Let's keep cranking it up to see how far it'll go. 2.3. It keeps going. Get the fan turned on. 
2.5 we're dropping down below 4.4 volts so yeah this thing this thing chooch is pretty good let's see how it'll actually charge all right well i got it hooked up to their um 12 volt cigarette lighter power supply here and um, like i said should be two two amps input on the thing um Let's see how that goes. We are currently upside down. Because it's just the way it had to be set up. If I touch this, that ground is going to pop off of there. So I can't really mess with it too much. But as of right now, as far as I can see, we are charging at 1.45 amps. I'm going let it, to let it run for a little bit and see if it maybe plateaus and comes up to uh, their 2 amp claim. And just so you know, the power supply is currently putting out a half an amp because 12 volts cut down five, it's, it's there's science involved, involved there, but yeah. So let's see what it does. So I got the screen flipped around so you can see what, see what we're looking at here. Um, it's still charging at uh, 1.45 amps, which is, I mean, we'll call that um, one and a half amps. Uh, I was thinking maybe after a little bit of time it would kind of ramp up and it, it did it. So as far as the Amazon description goes, it, they say two amps. I'm looking at a one and a half amps here. Uh, they do ship these things, all lithium batteries. If you're going to ship them by air, they got to be shipped on, um, what do they call that? Storage charge. So, I mean, which is roughly half charged as far as the batteries go. So it's not like it's at the end of the charge cycle and it's just kind of ramping down. But um, I'll check it again when I do run this thing down and, and see if it actually gets to that 2 amps. But as of right now, like it's sitting at 1.5 amps. And this is pretty much all the hardware they supply with the uh, charger to charge it. It's their power adapter, their cord. So, and like I said, the uh, power supply is set for 14 volts, which is kind of running voltage for a uh, automotive, uh, for a vehicle, which this thing will be plugged into. So, um, yeah, there's that. So, let's come in here and pop this thing off and see how it fits in the old uh, carrying case there. Here's the ground. That's a, <laughs> a trip, trip fuse there. We'll unplug this. Put that up there for next time. Uh, this particular guy, I don't need that on. I will later because I'm going to charge it. All the caps in place. It does have a relatively nice bag. Let me zoom out a little bit here. There you go, that's better. And like I said, I'm not sure if these are for any reason. I'll just put them on for the hell of it it might for actually it's probably for packaging into that box so i don't think we need that anymore i guess in these kind of stuff in there along with the little little nubby charger guy here and your usb cable for charging there you go there's the logo all right, there it all is. So, there we go. That is the NOCO GP40 uh, booster pack is what is what we're calling these things. And, um, yeah, like I said, it's Project Farm. They did their thing. Well, he did his thing on its bigger brother, assuming that the brand, the brand's little brother is just as good as that. I'm sure it'll do fine. The bigger brother is bigger than what I would ever need. I think it's close to three hundred dollars, whereas to this is a hundred bucks, and yeah, I'm cheap. So <laughs> yeah, we'll run this. Like I said, throughout the year, I'm not sure if I'll do a follow-up video just on this. Probably not. It'll probably be mixed in with some other stuff that I've found throughout the year that I'm going to test and get back to you on. And that's that's why we do these things because you know anything's good out of the box. We'll see how it does over the year. Um, I will put a link in the thing if you guys want to want to play along with me. If not waiting for a year and we'll we'll see how she uh see how she does and then we'll know for sure uh as always if i have ever put 
something like this that I'm testing, and you're like, hey, you know what, that guy talked about that thing, maybe I'll buy that now, always go back and check the comments, because sometimes I remove links for stuff that I don't have time to get back to to say that it's junk, and I'll say that it's junk in the uh, description of the video, just so you know. I don't want you to buy something that I, you know, seem good out of the box and then turn into a piece of crap. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's about it for this video. Um, comments, concerns, you can leave them down there in the comments section. And um, thank you for watching. There you go.